Hey everybody, my name is Sharon Quinn and I'm also known as the original Runway Diva and you are watching Model Behavior. Class is officially in session. Today my guest lecturer is Sharon Magic Jordan, an iconic internationally acclaimed model, educator, model coach, and she is also an ordained pastor. Welcome Sharon Magic Jordan to Model Behavior. Thank Finally, you. it took Finally. me forever to get you here, but I'm glad you're here because you you've how long have you been in the business? You've you've thirty years. Thirty? It's been thirty years. Thirty years. Yes. And you've worked. I mean, you worked with some major people: Patrick Kelly, yes. Roberto Cavalli. Yes. Talk about how that all happened. How that started for you? Well, I hope we have enough time. Um, <laughs> let's start with uh, Roberto Cavalli which is very huge now. I worked for him my first year in New York. I came to New York with the IMTA um, convention, moved back to Atlanta, came back to Atlanta, and I said, okay, I'm moving to New York. Came into New York, got an agency. Roberto Cavalli came to our agency casting. I was in Milan my first month. In and you can, now IMTA, that's, they do the, the, the the model scouting yes. things. Absolutely. And you came I through came, them? No, I came with the modeling school, which I was not even a student at the school. So in order to go to the convention, you had to be with a modeling school. Mm -hmm. So my friend allowed me to come with them. I went in, we performed commercials, runway, photo posing, and all of the major agencies in the city were at that Waldorf Astoria. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it was Amazing, and I won in all of my categories. So, oh, so, so you get you? Do they choose winners in each category. Yes. yes. And so you were working. You know how incredibly lucky to be working. You you were in a Milan a month after you uh, got to New York. Yes, a month, like a month, Man. a month, a month. And those were the glory days. The of, real of glory days. And let me tell you this, Sharon, going into Milan, but I was living in the Y. I'm sorry? The YMCA. Yeah, that's where I lived because I came into New York, didn't know anyone, I had a roommate, and um, she was with Wilhelmina, and I was with another local agency that wasn't as big as Wilhelmina, and I began to work first. And we were roommates, and we didn't have any place to stay. We lived in the Y on 47th Street. But you were making, you were making money. No, I had just started. We had just oh, started. Oh, we had oh, oh, just oh. started. I had just come into New York. That's where I was living. Do and they I, still do? You can't. Can you still live at the Y now? No, no, that doesn't happen anymore, Sharon. They, they not done now, anymore. how long did that that did, did the you wind did. up staying at the Y before uh, you transitioned to your own to my own apartment? Uh, maybe about four months. Maybe, maybe about four months. Now, what was what was working overseas? Wow. What was that like? Because only now, I, I would say in like the last 10, 15 years, are plus sizes really going over there oh, cool. now? Because there was no market right. back when I was doing it. Right, 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 right. right. So what, what, what was that experience like? It was simply amazing. There were girls from all over the world. The go sees were like really intense. I mean, really big cattle calls. You had to be skillful. You needed to know your craft. You had to have a real serious work ethic because all of the girls were like on, on point. You were competing against girls from all over the world. And it was just amazing. I mean, I was just so excited because really Patrick Kelly was the person that actually helped me get into Saint Laurent, which is another major thing that happened to me. I worked for Yves Saint Laurent, Yves himself, not someone for the house, but I worked for the king of couture himself. What was that oh, like? That was crazy. It's a crazy story. Patrick set it up, made the call. I go to the front desk. Fabulous atelier, marble floors, and chandeliers, and it was just amazing. I go to the front desk, and I say, I need to see the monsieur. And the receptionist says, no more black girls. Ooh. 
I was devastated, but I stood there. I said, well, my friend called, and I went through the whole story. Lulu de la Falaz, which was his muse at the time, opened up these big doors. She said, come with me. Girl, I walked through that door. She led me to this room, and there he was, the king of couture himself, Yves Saint Laurent, with a cigarette in his hand. He said, will you walk for me? It all happened so fast. What? It was crazy, I'm telling you. I was so nervous, but I said, Eat, don't fail me now. I walk for him. Within minutes, it was a crew of people that dressed me from head to toe. Jewelry, hats, gloves, everything. Walk for me again. He said, Treasure Lee, you have the show. Oh, man. <laughs> Just like that? Like that. Now, you, now, Ooh, that just made the hair. I don't even have no hair on my head. That made the hairs on my neck stand up. It's true. Now true you, story. Uh, story. Saint Laurent, yes. Patrick Kelly, yeah, Roberto Cabal. Yeah. What other designers? Because these are major. These three major people those, you, you, those you're talking two, about. Well, actually, um, I did shows here in a few shows here in New York with, of course, the great Willie Smith, yeah. which was just I cannot even tell you what that was really like. Um, he was just amazing. Um, let's talk about Willie for a moment because mm -hmm. these are iconic designers that a lot of people don't even know about. Yeah. Willie Ware and Tookie Smith. And we were doing the Parsons show when they used to do the jewelry shows when they would book professional models to come. And Willie was one of the judges at the, for the students, for the senior students. And I was in the show and he saw me at the show and he, Loved me, and I did his show. I used to love his collection his when it came when fun. when he was at his peak. Yes. I used to wear a lot of Willie Wear. Oh, that he, stuff was great. It was really cool. He was fun. He was a fun guy. And let me tell you who else. I worked for Betsy Do Johnson. She's crazy. <laughs> she's wild, red hair, and she's really wild. She said, "Come on, let's just go crazy." He loved her. That was another designer that I really loved. Mark so, Bauer, I work for. Who's let me here. ask you this: Now you did the you you did the shows when the shows were shows. Were shows. Yes, yes. And it's it's so different it's now. So different. Tell me some of the the differences in the industry that you see mm -hmm. now versus back then. Well, let's just start with the attitude. I think a lot of girls have this notion that it's just all about how I look, um, my hair, my gear. Mm. It's the mindset that's so different now. We wanted to be great. We worked at our craft. Our work ethic was over the top. Here, it's just... Now talk about work ethic. Yeah. When you say that, yes. it, go into that. What do you mean? Okay, we did things that, call, that was called testing, mm -hmm. where you would build your portfolio. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna have your book, your book was your Bible. This is what you had to work with. This was your tool to sell you. You would go and you would shoot with different photographers. You would come up with different looks. You would do your homework. What look was right for me? Mm -hmm. What works for you would not particularly work for someone else. You just had to know who you were as far as what your market was. Find out your market, number one. You can't be all over the place. Come on and Can say you do that. catalog? Are we doing, are you editorial? Are you more commercial? But I was just so blessed I did them all. I started out really glamorous mm -hmm. in the shows, but when I found out I could do the catalog, I could do my own makeup. We could be really wild and crazy. We could take it down and we can give it to you in Wichita, Kansas. We could do Kmart. We could do Sears. We could do Saint Laurent. Yep. So you had to work at your crap, mm -hmm. your diet, your exercise. You would come to the party, but it would be a drive-by. Bye-bye, because I have to get my sleep. Because I have to look my best, because I got to go out and make this money. That was my money. So I had to eat properly, sleep properly, be around the right people. The mindset, but I think my biggest, my, my, I think the greatest asset I had was just a praying mother. I just have to say, family 
so, so incredibly important that kept me grounded because I had a base to work from. I think that's important for, for just about anything yes. that you do because you can lose yourself. Absolutely. You can really lose yourself oh. in, spa in fashion. Oh, my God. Any, any branch of entertainment, yes. if you start believing the hype and oh drinking the Kool-Aid, you are in trouble. Major trouble. Now, you said, you, you just used the word, you said, um, 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 uh, it's about, a, I can't remember what you said, but talk about the the downside oh because there was a now, lot of downsides you you were really young yeah. when you when you went off to milan well right kind of sort of ish i was looking 16 but i had already uh, i was already 21 but that's still so, fairly young that's fairly young yeah what yeah. kind of and you you thousands of miles away from your family in tough. foreign place that was hard how do you that circumvent was that was tough. And people must be coming at you they were. from everywhere. They were. So how do you avoid that? So, okay. Well, again, the base, I had been taught that from a child. I walked with integrity. Of course, the temptations were there and mm -hmm. everything was there, but I knew in my heart what I would do, what I would not do. I'm just not doing it. So what it is, what it was, I, I always surrounded, tried to surround myself with people in the industry that were really connected, mm -hmm. not the people who s made me these promises, but people that were actually connected to the business. So I tried to stay close to people who were really uh, doing this thing for real. And do how thing. do you, because I, I, dare I say, there are a lot of chicks <laughs> today mm -hmm. that think that that's what they're doing, mm -hmm. but they're actually aligning themselves with, with the, the very world. people that they shouldn't be. So how do you tell the difference Good. between the two? That's a great question. I, I have something that's called discernment. And that, that's, it's, it's just like a pretty good judge of character. I can kind of feel that. But you know when something that's like really nice, you know a nice person when you see it, mm -hmm. but if someone is a little negative, I would get this alarm, this alert in my tummy. You would go, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, I need to stay away from you. I need to stay away from you. Something's not right here. It's not feeling right. My heart is fluttering right now. Why is this person? Mm -hmm. That's so, That really kept me because I really and truly would just tap into the person's spirit. I was like, Mm, not nice, uh, not good. Uh, uh, photographers that were just incredibly insane. Yeah. yeah. They were very famous. They made the girls. It was a bad period at it one was a point, I remember no, this. It was a bad period, it was a lot of drugs. Uh, I'm just telling you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, there was days that I made a lot of money and there was days I was broke. It was days that I just was not working. Now, how did you how do you survive when those times come? And please know that if you do this for any amount of time, those times will come. Oh, they're coming. They're so coming. how do you how do you handle that? Well, I, I, I got a job at the Black Hair Is. You remember the Oh <laughs> you just, I was a receptionist. Just took it back. I was the receptionist at Black Hair Is and it was the Glimby company. It was all oh, Michael Weeks and all the fabulous people that mm. do the hair and blah, 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 blah. So I was still around the, the fashion piece. So I got a little job as a receptionist mm. and I would do little things like that. But then it would start up again. So I took like little jobs on the side. Never did the bar thing or the barmaid or that because that would have been late night. But basically I did the receptionist thing to kind of keep things going and mm. of course, Calling home, say I need a couple of dollars. And this is when you were overseas. It was back and forth. Back, back and forth. Back and okay. Forth, back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. But and did you did fun. you ever do uh, television? Like, com did you do branch yes. out into commercials I and did, things I like that? A, I did a um, Haynes commercial, um, and also did another. Uh, that commercial was with um, Cheryl Lee Ralph. This is when Dream Girls was really big. Oh. So this was really, really cool. So I was with the theater girls, and they booked models and theater girls. So I did this. Pantyhose commercial that was like really cool. Now, do you still you still model occasionally or no, not really. I'm uh, the lead coach at Barbizon School of Modeling, so I'm ah. teaching. So I'm coaching now, and it's it's amazing. I am the runway coach there. I've been there for like 12 years, and these are kids from all over the world. I teach them from six years old to the adults. It's acting as well as modeling. It's great right here in New York. You like that? Love. It, because it's not a job, it's a passion, it was my life. We, we have a book, we have a manual, but I keep telling my students, I am the book. 
I am the book. I lived it. It was my life. I loved what I did. I, I was the best. And you did it well. Did. You did Thank it well. Thank you so much. I tried. Because there are a lot of people teaching. Oh. <laughs> that shouldn't be teaching. If you've only done six shows and they're not major shows, you shouldn't teach. It's true. You don't know what you're doing yet. I just got to put it out there. It's true. Um, it's true. It's true. It's true. Now, you're also an ordained pastor. Yes. Yes, and I I've also seen you, you produce shows, too. I've seen you yes. do that before. And I've been in a couple of the shows you've And produced. yes, you have. And let me just tell you, I am so proud of you. This Thank is sidebar. You. <laughs> you know, this, this is a private moment. Uh, this is private. <laughs> we'll just let you guys speak in. Okay. I am so proud of you, you and your great success here. Um, I always loved your spirit. Loved the professionalism. You were always, you were just bubbly. You were just so cool. And it was always laughter. And we always had fun. And I always wanted to, I always liked working with people with that type of spirit. Yes. You yep. need that on the set. You need that backstage. You need those type of, uh, that type of talent around you. Absolutely. So you had to be at my show. And I love production as well. So those are some great days. I, I just love it. Tell me about being an, uh, a pastor. Wow. And what this, brought that about? This was uh, amazing. I, I was raised in a church, and I came to New York, of course, to Fast and Furious, and um, kind of strayed away from the faith mm -hmm. uh, and started traveling. Went to Paris, and Milan, traveling the world over, and I began to see some things that was not so nice. And a lot of my friends began to pass away. I'm going to just keep it real. And I said, God, this thing is coming very close. I'm around this. So whatever you need me to do, I'm going to do it. So I came back into New York, and I started going to this church in Brooklyn. I served there for like 15 years, 16 years, um, teaching Sunday school to working with the youth and um, just just loving God and just really just turning my life over because I had lived it and I mm -hmm. did it. Mm -hmm. So we had to take classes. We had to take a test. And the pastor of the church at that time, um, they had nominees for pastors and I had leadership skills. Um, I love God, I had compassion for people. I knew the word, and we had to take a test. I took the test. I became a minister first. It was a ministry, it was a process, mm -hmm. the ministry. And in order to get ordained, you had to take another test. So I went to um, Bible school and that type of thing. So you go through the training, and you learn the books of the Bible, and you learn how to deal with people, and you, all of those things. So I was ministering all along. Anytime that you deal with this is ministry. You're reaching so many people. You're helping people. This is ministry, Sharon. It is. You know how many lives that you're really touching? Girls that want to do this, girls who have this misconception of what the industry is really like, and you're going to give them the real deal. That's ministry. You can save somebody's life from going down the wrong path or dealing with the wrong people, or going about it the wrong way. So this vehicle, the model behavior, you're gonna have to behave yourself, girls. You're gonna have to do it the right way. If you wanna work. If you wanna work. If you wanna, and that's with any industry. Yes. Now I've started to bring in musicians and people from other walks of entertainment. Yes. Because anybody that's doing something and doing it well, there's somebody that wants to do it as well. Are you kidding? And they, generally want to be up in your face talking. And if you're like me, you don't want them in your face. Okay? <laughs> you're so right. You don't really... I'm, I'm, you're I'm, so right. I'm 55. I'm a crank box. I don't really want to answer all your questions. So you watch my show. You tell me, you know, what you're interested in, and I'm going to bring on one of my friends that do that so that they can tell you, and you can watch and learn. You can repeat it until you know it by heart. This is great. This is this is so great. And I, what I love, you said, uh, classes in session, because it is a class and it is a learning uh, experience. And you just move from one area 
to the next. You maybe start out in the model. You might go into production. You may go into interior. This design. is the yes. number one thing that I tell models. Mm -hmm. Don't put yourself in that box Don't that says you're a model. Don't There's so many streams of income, so many so ways you can make money. Yes. Don't limit yourself. Maybe you got pretty hands. Yes. You can make money Specialty. like that. Yes. Maybe you have great, great legs. Yes. You can have tattoos all over. There's a market for you. This but you I'm gotta saying. get in where you fit in. Exactly. And this is what we were talking about, the opportunities. There's so many other opportunities other than the runway. And we know that the it's cute, but it don't pay. Nothing. That does, that's just that's it, a pat it, on the back it, for you just, because it's, it's not going to pay your rent. It's just gravy. But the till is, is that where I made the most money was in print. Yep. I'm telling you from the ads that I, I mean, I had tons of ads and, you know, from... You just name it, from hair products to this. And chicks get hung up on, they want to, they, they want the glamorous part of it. Mm -hmm. Me? Yeah, I'm going to wear the Kmart bunny, That's bunny the vest with the shirt with the That's holly it. berries on it. Because them coins are going to be lovely. Those okay. are the loveliest coins. And when you're going to do 250 for an hour, and maybe you work 20 minutes, mm -hmm. they don't understand yeah. that. That's called catalog work, I was like, people. I don't care. Ain't nobody going to see this. I don't really care. It's great. It, Steady money. My Show job is to sell it. Okay, that's, that's that's it. And then I get my little check, and I'm out the door. They, but they don't. And if it. and if they thought like this, they will work all the time. Yes. The other thing I, I've been telling them, particularly with runway, you think that you get on the runway, you just walk, and it's that's it. No, your job is sell. to sell the clothes. Sell. And if you're on the runway and people are looking at their phones, <laughs> or they, you know, they're doing everything but looking at what you're doing. You're not doing your job. <laughs> not doing your job. You're not doing And that's your the job. number one thing that I try to teach. That's you great. have to find a way. And you you know, as a plus size girl, I wore the ugliest clothes for most of but my you career. Would, no, but you would wear it, girl. And that's the whole, you you, you got to act like you like it. No. You got to sell it. Even if, And you know it's ugly. I would have people wait for me. Did you like what you were wearing? Didn't matter if I liked it or not. Absolutely. But this is the deal. They put the ugliest pieces on the best models a lot of times because they knew you were going to be able to bring it. Of course, you can do the drop dead gorgeous gown. Anybody can walk in. I that. would get my clothes and be like, "What? Why do I have this? What? A, why am I? Wearing? Okay." <laughs> but you did it. But I, you. <laughs> but you did it, man. But you did it. It is all about the twirl. Yeah. Oh, it was all about the twirl because you could do a piece of twirl. If like nothing that. else happens, I'm gonna spin my way you to spin. a standing ovation. Watch and see. Watch and see. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Love now, it. now, did you? Now, you, you're an ordained pastor. Mm -hmm. So, you you don't have you want to have your own church? Maybe? I've just, oh, you do have I, your own church. I've just started Bible study in my home. This is something that's called Agape Deliverance Ministries. I've started Bible study and it's brand new. This is, I'm so good. I'm you're, so you're, good because you're, you're you're you didn't prophetic. tell me that. You're prophetic. Okay. You're prophetic. <laughs> I didn't tell you because it's new. I also have a prayer line that I've started. So I'm starting very small, um, and because I started it in my home, of course, it's just very small, but eventually we will find an ed uh, a place to, to worship. And But I'm going to start very small, and I'm reaching uh, my students. Great. They have questions. We can talk about it. It's not the pomp, the circumstance. It's just straight word. And you're doing Bible study? Bible study. Yes. What does the word do for you? Oh, my God, it gives me life. It just gives me life. I'm telling you, uh, I'll see my, it's okay, I can tell the world. I'll see my 61st birthday, I'll be 61 years old. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror every day and say, okay, God, this is all you. I'll be 61. Wait a minute. I'm 60 now. And I love saying it. Oh, you, mm. <laughs> girl, you almost made me curse just now. <laughs> You look fabulous. Thank you so much. This God. is what, yes, this I'm is what 60. 60 should look like. I'm yes. 60. I'm 60 years old. So it gives me life. The word gives me life. It gives me hope. The days of days that I don't feel really great, I look at myself and say, okay, God, there's something else you want me to do. There's something else. There's somebody else I need to reach. And you allow me to be here to look like this for your glory, it's not for me, it's to help someone else. And I just get so much joy when I tell and share people, share with people about my life. And it, and it just, 
I can just see the aha moments. They go like, oh, really? Did you do that? Well, you know what? I can do that too. So it gives people hope. So word gives me life. Okay, it gives I'm, me joy. I'm, I am moved to ask you this question. Sure. Um, you said, so you pray mm -hmm. and you talk to God mm -hmm. and you get your answers. Sometimes, yeah, he makes me wait, but go ahead. Oh, <laughs> you say he make you wait. Sometimes he makes me wait. <laughs> but when, this is going to sound like a weird question. No. This is going to be the last question because no, I'm almost out of time. But I guess I want to know, mm -hmm. what, how do you know mm -hmm. when he's speaking to okay. you? All right. That, that's not weird. That's a great question. He speaks in many ways. It's not like an audible voice, in which people think is like audible, like, Sharon Magic Jordan, you must do this. <laughs> no, it's the supernatural, not the spooky natural, okay? So what it is, he speaks through the word a lot of time. If I have questions about things, he'll take me to the scriptures, because I do know my word. He'll take me to the scriptures or, or whatever that I'm dealing with, or sometimes he comes through other people, and people will, just like you said, do you have your church? Is the church that? He uses people. He comes through the word. I'm telling you, he speaks in different ways. He, he deals with us differently. Um, I'm a dreamer. I'm a heavy dreamer. He deals with me in dreams. It's very, very vivid. It's very detailed. Sometimes I have visions, open visions, which is visions of a day and dreams are at night. Okay, I gotta stop you. And I wish I had asked you this earlier because that is fascinating to me. And I wanna know more. But you guys, you hear this music in the background, you know we are just about out of time. And I'd like to thank my guest, Sharon Magic Jordan, for sharing her industry knowledge with us today. Now before I go, as always, I wanna leave you with a few thoughts. I want you to one, remember that you can't change the game until you first learn the game. Always surround yourself with positive people and positive things. Do what you love and love what you do. And lastly, be who you are, but be who you are tastefully. Always have some class about yourself. Now don't forget to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Thanks for watching Model Behavior, and I'll see you guys next week. Class is officially dismissed. Bye, y'all.